Nationals. We're getting it getting it out of the way right in the first week. Uh, looks like we're in turn two or three. Uh, and we've got Paul Field versus Peter Smith. These are uh, two locals. we got Dirty Pete uh, flying some scum and uh, Paul flying some Imperials. And uh, we were talking to these guys just before the game. And uh, we can probably break down some of what their plans are. Uh, Pete's never seen... Oh, no, not Pete. Sorry. I'm, I've got Pete. You've got Paul. So mm -hmm. Pete believes that Nim beats Suntir. That's pretty good. we got Suntir. Paul's flying quick draw. Some aces here with, yeah. a, with a really tanky Delta defender. And uh, Pete believes that Nim's going to beat Suntir in one or two turns. He's going to try and get Jostro uh, double tapping on quick draw. So that's quick draw losing a heck of a lot of shields in one round. And then uh, he's hoping that his uh, end game comes down to Fen versus the Defender. Yeah, so you were saying that Pete was hoping that uh, people are going to be unaware of what Jostro's ability is and what they do and be caught unawares by it. Yeah, he's definitely trying to surprise uh, surprise Paul here. And in a perfect world, you're, he's probably hoping that he can strip trip Quick Draw's ability in the first round and then Quick Draw no longer matters at that point. E exactly, right? And especially with... Uh, Oh, he doesn't have proton bombs. He's got seismic charges and thermals. Like the stress is gonna hurt. The double damage is gonna hurt, mm -hmm. right? So, or, or no, he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have Cad Bane. He doesn't have Sabine. It's just gonna be one damage. So he's really counting on Jostro to get in there and surprise them. Yeah, I feel like with any list that's got Jostro in it, Jostro is very much an important factor of that list. It's almost like a, a linchpin to a certain extent. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so, and and Paul's running a very interesting list too. I, I remember when he's got a lot of uh, online vassal experience, but when he wanted to uh, workshop it a bit in the store, I helped him run one session with it, and it's interesting. So um, he's actually himself has never really seen Trajectory Simulator, so it's going to be a surprise to him. So I'm hopefully he's ready for it when it when it yeah, happens. Pete might get that surprise off, right? Yeah, I mean I feel like you know what? To be fair, a lot of us are new and are going to be surprised by his Trajectory Simulator. I know it did come out recently, but you haven't been seeing it that very much until people done it. Kind of the light bulb went off and. They put two and two together and realized you could use it with Genius. Yeah. Uh, at least in this current meta, I know there's alternate rulings in some other metas, but we're yeah. worrying about our meta and that's, just, you can use it here. And we can talk about that just before we jump into sure. to Paul's plan. Trajectory Simulator allows you to launch a bomb 5 forward instead of dropping it behind you. Correct. At, in the Chicago regionals, they ruled that that does not interact with Genius, which allows you to discard the card to, to launch it forwards. Whereas, I think clearly in the rules, that's indefensible. And that you can, until it's FAQ, I think you, you can do that. Correct. I got to so. say, our, our marshal, I think, is making the right call here. It's yeah. very clear that Genius is creating a new opportunity to, to drop that bomb. And like, ergo, the director simulator works. It's pretty clear cut, but again. We, we may not like it, but yeah. it's what it is. Yeah. Now, Pete said his plan, or sorry, Paul said, we can go through Paul's, Paul's plan. He said he's a very reactive player. Yeah. And you can see here, he said his plan was to kill Nim first. Mm -hmm. And if not, he'd kill whatever Pete gave him. At some point when you're playing against the scum, you've got to just basically kill whatever you're given. Right, and so it looks like Pete's leading with Fen. He's going to be giving him Fen, right? I highly doubt P Pete's plan is to give him Fen. I think he's going to try to do what Paul was going to try to do with his Sunterfell. I think he's using Fen as his bait. And so, then yeah. and then Paul's using Sunterfell. He's trailing behind, using him as bait to bring in Pete's ships that he can turn on them. Correct. Yeah. It looks like he's planning, ho planning, hoping to get that to have Pete come in in that open space, and Sunderfell won't be there next turn anyways, and then he can turn the rest of his list in and try to turn on it all at once. Absolutely, I think that's they've they've set up really great here. We're seeing like some wonderful positioning from these players. Uh, both are trying to bait the other one in, circling around each other. We're trying to to see uh, where they're going to be in the next couple of turns. The engagement's going to be super important for this. Uh, Oh, am I being too loud? No, tapping on the table. Oh, tapping on the table. Sorry about that, boys. Uh, yeah, they're both trying to bait each other with Fen and Suntir, two really, really tough, tough ships that can get into range one and do damage and bail out to range three and not take any damage. So it'll be really interesting to see how they, they play on each other and whether that trajectory simulator is going to play a role in surprising, surprising Paul and dumping some damage and stress. Well, here's the thing with the trajectory simulator is so interesting now. If, especially with having that PS10 and the genius option, if Paul makes the wrong call and goes ship left with his sooner fell, that's it. He's get he's getting a bomb. Absolutely. Because no matter what Pete did, if if he does a three, if he does a hard if, if his sooner fell does a three hard left turn and then boosts and goes in that space, he just does it before he moves. If he doesn't do that, but he's still in that space, if Pete went three forward, he's gonna hit him anyways. Yep. So we we it's it's very powerful, especially on a turn that you can still hit somebody with a missile with after that. In the lead up to this regionals, I was giving some of the guys prep mm -hmm. against Nim Miranda, 
Now I threw bomblets on Miranda and Nim had trajectory simulator protons and, and thermals. And, you know, Nim jousted. He threw a proton bomb at quick draw. That's a damage underneath and a damage off the shields. And then he mm -hmm. got two rounds later, threw a bomblet on. Quickdraw had taken a direct hit from the proton bomb. Bomblets did two. Sabine did one. Gone. Mm. Yeah, it's a pretty deadly combo. So now if you're Pete, Pete this turn, what are you thinking? Are you are you going to dive straight in with everybody? Or are you going to be play a little bit coy and maybe hard one with, with Fen behind that rock and bring him around the long way and really use him like the bait that he's supposed to be and bring him in for late game and hit somebody on like three turns after the engagements happen? Or do you want to just go nuts because he's got... Uh, he's got the mind link, so... Pete's a very cautious player. He is. He's a yes. very cautious player. Calculated is the word I would and, like to use and, for him. And, and Paul is also playing cautiously, mm -hmm. so I think we're we're not going to see an engagement next round. And, and if we do, I'd be very surprised. And we have a, a question here about Jostro being able to trigger. Um, so Jostro will be able to trigger up to four times... We've got seismic charges, we've got thermal detonators, we've got the trajectory simulator, and we've got harpoon missiles. So there's a there's a bunch of different ways in this list for Pete to get some of that splash damage to get Jostro off. Yes. Right? And, and he's going to try and use it to make sure that Quick Draw loses all of her shields on one round. Now, the question is actually, actually quite accurate. You're actually correct. Uh, Jostro will only have two opportunities to trigger because... Uh, Pete does not have extra munitions, so he only has one seismic charge and one thermal detonator. And but, he, but he also is... has harpoon missiles. Ah, okay, yes. Yeah. Oh, I was using reading seismic charges as seismic bombs. Right, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. And that is important to know, yeah. No, Nim does have genius, doesn't he? He should. Can you pull up the lists? Yeah. Uh, Pete's list. Look what he does. So. Oh, that's my thermal extra. He does not have genius. I thought he said that he did. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go check the table. So we're actually gonna go double check that just to be sure. Because there are we 80, thought Pete was 80, writing it. 80-ish people today. Yes, it's a regional. Uh, it's an Ontario regionals, Ontario, Canada. You guys should all come by and watch. It's only a very warm minus 33 degrees right now. Yeah. The asterisk is uh, initiative. Yeah, thank you very much. I was just about to ask that. That's why we're trying to confirm it. Uh, I don't know how to say your name, but we're going to try to confirm that for you. Because you're right. I don't know why he wouldn't have it either if he has the title. Oh, I know a genius is an uh, astromech droid that you get with the title, and it's a zero point. But it's not on this form, so you're right. You're actually right. That would be not on the list at that point. Yeah, he's genius. It's not on his. Yeah, yeah. Tell him to change it, otherwise he's got an illegal list. Well, write it in. Okay. It's on his other list. It's not on this one. Okay. Uh, okay, perfect. That's how I'll pronounce it from here on out. Thank you, Dutch. <coughs> oh, there's no space on it on this thing, because... On the sheet, the match. So we should type. be able to get. Is it possible to add that in, or? Oh, perfect. Yeah, that should be changed. Okay, my writing was awful. Anyways, <laughs> I mean it's no better than Pete's. Yeah, great catch, everyone. Thank you. Oh, so there you go. So he did dive. He dove Fen right in. I'm 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 kind of shocked. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I did not really expect, uh, especially when Pete was describing his strategy. Right, he said he wanted Fen in the end game. You know, he was hoping that Nim would take out Suntir. But Nim's in a great place to do some serious damage to Suntir. If he pushes the limit, he can drop a thermal detonator on him at pilot skill 10, yes. double stress him, take a third of his life away, and then uh, set up harpoons or, or even seismic charge him at the same time. Well, to be fair, he's got his long-range scanner a target lock on Soonerfell, so Paul's got to be very, very careful where he does the Soonerfell now because if Pete did a three forward and Paul... like. I think Paul might be in trouble by having gone left. He really needed to go straight. I think for sure you're going to see... I think you're going to see a trajectory simulator bomb and a harpoon missile on the same turn. I think we're going to see it this turn. Also, I, think I you're, don't... I think you're right. I, I expected them both to be cautious, and they've... Paul's been somewhat cautious. Pete's Pete's been... Uh, 
a little more aggressive than uh, I would expect from him. Also, we should call it simple. It's a little bit difficult to tell with the angle, but I'm not 100% confident that that Fen got into range one on the defender. I don't think he I did. I think that's range two. I don't two. think he did. And that's a brutal place to be when you're Fen. And now, if you look at the positioning of Jostro, right? Mm -hmm. Pete's got inertial dampeners on that ship. So if he can set up multiple turns of, of him sitting there and breaking... Right, Fen Rao can do the green, can clear it. He's got that open dial. Yeah. Jostro can park, yeah. and and uh, and set up to, to get soon to your next turn. Yeah. Now I really like that defensive barrel roll backwards from Paul. That was really a really good option on that option. He yeah, but targeted I, I, lock I, first, found that he was in in range, and then he barrel rolled back. So he's actually out of Jostro's range now. He's out of Jostro's range. Uh, we're in uh, Toronto Cosmic. So, but your trajectory simulator here. That might double no, I, stress. I, that I, double stresses Fen. Uh, it severely limits what he can do next turn in his repositioning. But maybe not. I mean, he's only he's only got the, one bomb. He's only got one bomb. We also should mark out that with the angle of the camera, we can't be guaranteed of the ranges. That might not. Pete is probably looking to tell whether or not that would be in the range one. And as you said, with only two bombs, I don't think he's going to risk it on a potential. Right. I think he's going to use it when he knows he's going to hit. And I think oh. he doesn't hit, and he's not going to. There you go. He's not going to genius it. So Fair he's enough. Gonna, he's probably just going to harpoon missile him though. Or he. There's no harpoons on Captain Nim, is there? Oh, right. Those were on Jostro. My bad. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So this this might actually be a sticky situation for Pete's Fen and a good situation for Paul's setup there. So like like Paul was saying, he wanted to bait out one of his ships. You know, and he was going to jump on that bait. And, uh, oh, we've got some some people in chat uh, agreeing that directory simulator wouldn't, wouldn't get Fen. So... It'll yeah, that's be, the thing. It was. I agree with you, Dutch. I'm not 100 percent sure he would have gotten him either, and that's why he didn't go. For I mean, it. this is this is a nightmare scenario for Fen Rao at range two of both those ships. Yes. No thrusters, but he does have double focus. But he's just gonna have to worry about three dice to protect him. We're now at the state of the game where just three dice and two focuses is not enough. All right, hit so crit, are you hit spending crit. the... Oh. Yeah, you definitely do. Yeah. We'll target lock for the next return shot, which means he's going to shoot at the defender. Ooh. Uh, looks like Spend the focus. Takes one hit, takes one crit only. Takes a crit. Ah, uh, Dash, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Ooh, what's that? Blinded? That's Blinded pilot. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, uh, not great for Pete. That's not a good start to the game for him. That's a rough one. I mean, Nim's still a monster. We'll have to see. Yeah. That is beautiful. No return Probably. shot from Fen there. That's, which, actually, if I'm Paul, I actually, no, I don't want Fen to fire because he's going to fire at the defender and he doesn't get the trigger, the ability anyways. Well, he's going to shoot at Sunterfell. Sunterfell's got uh, defensive tokens. Shouldn't do a lot this shot. Mm -hmm. Not when you roll like that, at least. He's got the long-range scanner's target lock, so. Yep. He's going to go for it. You know, gambling that he's going to get uh, an above average roll this time. That's completely average. Two hits. Sinterfell rolls a lot of dice. Four, four with thrusters. Yeah, he should be uh, good. Yeah. No damage. Didn't even need the thrusters. Should have kept the lock, Pete. Should have kept the lock. Fen doesn't shoot. Blinded pilot turned down. Sinterfell can't shoot Jostro, so he's shooting on... On Nim. Uh, Fen, Fen, not Fen, sorry. Uh, yeah, Fen Rao took the damage. So what happened here? Okay. Looks like Nim took one. It, uh... El... El Conjo, Jonado, sorry for b b butchering your name there. Uh, we, we believe, yes, it can, absolutely it can be used with Bomblet Generator, yep. but as in the new FAQ, uh, when using Genius and Bomblet, you would have to have discarded the Bomblet token, so you'd need extra munitions to do it twice. Yeah. But if you run Nim with oh they've they've moved Jostro there oh okay yeah putting him back yeah it's a lot of blanks on Pete's side this round that's, yeah that's tough he's gonna have a uphill battle that is true his I dice mean, have not not given them any favors this round now if he gets a great bomb off versus soon tier fell then that's gonna really swing things around but Jeff is gonna but Paul, doing no damage this round is really brutal yeah Paul is gonna probably have to want to go two bank left with sooner fell there he doesn't want anything to do with that middle of the board he's yeah he's got to get soon out of there I think but I don't know. Like like Paul said, Suntir's bait, so I can completely see him bombing out of there. This is why I'm so in love with Twin Ion on Interceptors, is because a three-bank green would be really nice to have right about now. 
Well, he's got a targeting computer. I mean, that's a that's a aggro fell, which is awesome. That's an interesting call. I haven't seen that that Sundar fell in a very long time. And as he was saying that he's a reactive player, I yeah. think what he uses the targeting computer for is: Am I in range for a target lock? Yes. Barrel roll back out of range. Pull focus. Yeah. Give me four dice. It's it's a really smart play, and you could see it did help him there. Absolutely. So it was really cool. If he'd stayed where he was, he would have been bombed, and Jostro and uh, and Nim would have been piling on the damage. So yeah, well, we should also Pete point out, didn't though, get that surprise that he wanted off for how bad of a so. for how bad quote unquote of a turn that was for Pete. He's only down one shield and one hull on, on two of his ships, so he's he's still in very good shape. Fen and Nim are still incredible yes, ships. Yes. Uh, like I said, Jostro can a ton uh, can not a ton, can inertial dampener. Yes. Right. We have to constantly think about the positioning of Jostro. Yes. All right. All right. Thanks for that, Volt. We're gonna we're gonna double check that to make sure we're on we're on it. Can you confirm Nim's call? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the uh, for the helping hands. But even then, he's got such a toolbox, Nim, right, with auto blaster instead of TLT, just to fit the points in for Jostro and Fenrao that Suntir can't get close to Nim. Well, as we saw with pre nerfing of uh, Nim, that auto blaster is just brutal. Yeah. So um, that's going to be an interesting thing to see. Because Auto Blaster, you can't roll defense dice against it. Any right. hit goes straight through. So if you're Pete here, do you 4K your fan? Do you Talon roll? Do you just bug him out and come back around? Because Joshua can go 1-4 and pull focus for the team anyways. So Pete's target for Nim is Suntir Fell. Yeah. And Pete's target for Fell, for Fen, is draw. the defender. Okay. So it'll be really interesting to see... Uh, how he does that because Jostro's in a really rough position to get shots on quick draw. He's put him behind a couple of rocks. They're in the way. Mm -hmm. right? It's going to be hard for him to get Jostro in a position mm -hmm. where he can do the double shot that he wants to on quick draw. And it looks like Paul's playing cagey enough that he's not going to be able to get that surprise bomb. So it'll be uh, interesting to see for sure. It was pretty interesting to look at just how good of an upgrade pack um, the hired guns was. Joshua's coming in at 27 points. Harpoon yep. missile, mine link, dampeners, chips, and and munitions fail safe. That's crazy. Yep. And there was two damage on Fen. Yes. The defender did a damage. The, we which, missed that. Which is also brutal. You, you yep. don't want to see that at any time. Well, that means he's a direct hit from uh, from dying. Yeah, he's 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 a crit. Uh, he's potentially a crit away from dying because there's multiple crits that could end this game as well. So do you think a 4K would clear from the Delta? Or is he going to 3-bank up in? So the 4K is, is dicey, but I feel it clears. So that's what we're going to see first. I mean, he's made a decision with with, with Fell. Right? Sunter Fell's dial, that dial is down. He's mm -hmm. made the decision. And I'm with you. I think he's bailing with I it. I think he has to. If he comes in, he's going to have... It's going it's to eat damage for sure. Yeah. So we've yeah, we've got... Pete's made Fen's decision. He's probably made Nim's decision. Nim... I think Nim's going to follow... Uh, Fenrau, uh, Sunterfell, oh, their names are so similar, mm. up around the rock, but uh, I couldn't tell you where Jostro was going, and I don't think Pete knows either. He hasn't put that down there. This is a situation where I'm happier to be commentating than playing right now, because I would have, I don't really know what I'd want to go here if I'm on either side, because my, I don't know, I feel like I want to, I want to K and get Fen back in the game. Yeah. The great thing about the Thai SF is he's not going to have to do anything crazy. He's going to be able to do a, a simple one bank or whatever, or, and still have an arc, or he could do something crazy, and he could he could go ship right with his Thai SF and still have an arc on Sooner Fell from. Sorry, on Fen. Yeah. Fell, Fen. Sorry, guys, be with us. We haven't had the coffee <laughs> trigger ringing yet. It's going to be a couple of overlaps, but um, I don't know. And here's the thing: but if maybe Paul he come... turns his defender. He's he's giving his entire back exposed to both those, those two ships, and Joshua can tag him with the missile. Nim could also come in. Mm -hmm. I was wrong about which dial had been assigned. Nim could also come in, right? Mm -hmm. Come down board towards where Fen is. Yeah. And trajectory simulate and just uh, there you go. That does make more sense. Oh, five beauty! Straight. He went for the five straight. That makes more sense. That's actually a better call. I agree with Dutch so there. The, the uh, four... Fen should have definitely boosted. Yeah. In that situation, instead Agreed. of focusing. Agreed. You know what? In my, you, if, in my opinion, when you've got the Fen, range one is better than the second focus. Yeah. Because then at least you get the extra evade and the die. Five and forward. He takes no damage if he had if he had boosted. Five forward from the defender there, which blocks. Jostro coming in over the rock if he wanted to come in really hot. Yeah. Right? That was a great call by Paul. And then he can K-turn after next turn and be behind the entire field, or a hard three left and come in behind them. That was a way smarter call. But That's, the four would have fit. Uh, yeah, Barely, it, but it would have fit. I mean, a four might also have killed Fen. 
You mean if he would have blocked him or four straight? No, if, uh, like a four. If he four K'd, yeah, right, because you can see there's about yeah. enough space for a base there. Yeah, but uh, it's not for us to second guess. Oh, playing KG getting out. That's an interesting, uh, interesting choice there. I like to see where that's uh, where that's going. Both the players are playing very conservatively. Hmm. Oh, see, there we go. Jostro's coming around the rock. Is it over the rock, Pete? Nah. Well, he did get nudged, so we'll never know, but. No, they're, yeah, they're, pretty they're, they're it looks just, pretty clean. There's a difference between adjacent and overlapping. Yeah, exactly. Which, uh, some That's people... adjacent to the rock, not overlapping the rock. Interesting. So then maybe fa maybe Nim is going to come in, Nim's follow Jostro, and, and uh, dropping a thermal detonator on, on Quick Draw. I think Nim's coming in, and I think... I th oh, the fact that he target locked leads me to believe that Fen is not K-turning. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I like that. That's a good call. Using Fen as a blocker. Ooh, okay. He's going to focus. Jostro's going to get his ability. That means Nim is going to do a one or two bank, and he might be throwing a bomb to trigger Jostro. Uh, he's he's going to sacrifice Fen for that? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, the, see? Okay, good. There's Suntir. I mean, that's well, pretty much what we predicted. Now, here's the thing. If Pete predicted that as well and goes right and tries to trigger... Because he could just one... He could... He could do like a, a one or two and then trajectory simulate a bomb, maybe. I don't know. It might be out of range. Sunterfell's not going to stay there. No, he's going to probably boost and, I don't know, he'll probably barrel boost or. We're uh, just about 80 players, over 80 players. It's probably the cold weather. It's a little low for us, isn't it? Uh, a lot of people couldn't make it there out of town first week of January. Yeah, yeah. It's people recovering from the holidays. Yep. You know, a week long hangover from New Year's. Yep. Some people slipping on ice over the holidays and busting their ankles, different things like that. Yeah, last last regionals you were up to 120, 130. This mm. this regionals were down to 80. So, but it's just the time of year. Nothing to do we, at all with all the bombs and missiles. Uh, I mean, that's why we're in the booth. <laughs> 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 I, I, Paul's really thinking about where he's going. This is yeah. going to be, yeah, that's that's a pretty nice. Well, it's also important to know that without palp and without. Um, Without a lot of the other things, Sunderfell's not as unkillable as he used to be. You've got to be careful no. with him. You can't just put him into any situation willy-nilly, unplanned, and without an escape vector. So. Especially with all the bombs on the board, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. He's trying to make sure he's got a wide berth of the Nim. Oh, they're clearing the space. Yeah, Nim is coming down board. So I think he... Do you think he's crazy enough to drop it to the trajectory? Oh, I don't know. I mean... He if, hits him. If Fen hadn't have taken so much damage. Quick draw is really predictable. He's got a really closed-in dial. Actually, no, he won't do it because if he took damage here off of the bomb blowing up, then he'd be able to shoot Fenrell at probably range one with target lock. Yeah, I agree, Dutch. It's not bad for a minus 33, but we got to get used to it at some point, so you got to come out and play. It's supposed to be positive temperatures by the end of next week. Toronto is insane. It's going to be well, minus, myth, Devin. minus one in two days and, and positive temperatures by the end of the week. Okay. Ridiculous. So now but, do you think he okay, so he's in action phase, he's waiting. Are we do you think we're contemplating the, the that's that's, that's, bomb? What's, that's what's happening right now. Absolutely. He's, he's doing the math. He's, he's thinking does about this it. This makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. That's Paul, Pete is sitting there and thinking about the bomb and they're both very contemplative players mm -hmm. and this is but this is a tough you. decision. He's he's going to take one on Fan oh, if he, oh, he's doing it. Yeah. Like, forget it. Bye Fan. Yep. Look at that. Look at that one. Oh, Pete's, uh, love, Pete's a long-time player. Love that well-worn. He sells everything he wins. Everything. Yeah. Immediately hands it to his friend, puts it right on eBay. Immediately. Fence taking one for the team, boys. Yeah. Well, technically so is Joshua, too, because of the stress. Because that's a, Oh, it's a seismic. Okay, so just the no stress. Just a seismic. All right. Which means he probably wants to be able to cater next turn with well, Fence and, and uh So he's going to spend the seismic. Yeah. Yeah. And then Jostro goes back. And then he can still long range scanner for a target lock if he wants to. Yep. This is going to be a dark round for uh, for quick draw. This is spicy. Thanks, Pete, for making this an interesting round for us to watch. Oh, I appreciate that. This is cool. Well, I love it. I love the move. Go for it. Yeah. Now, and do you think do you think Paul read it and went right? He didn't. Ooh, he kind of, sort of. He's going to be able to barrel out of range. He's going to be able to barrel out of range. Uh, now, and this is this is scum. This is scum, Nim. So he can't hold that bomb. Yeah. Oh, you got a barrel roll, Paul. But then he's going to give 
Fen- no, he could barrel roll back. No, okay, so Fen's gonna get the range one shot anyways. He's still gonna. He's no matter where he goes, he's gonna take a range one Fen Rao shot. So then here's the thing: if you're taking a range one Fen shot, do you target focus right now? Bomb goes off, take damage, shoot Fen, Fen out Rao. the rear, and then shoot him again with your target lock from your FCS. Take Die. two shots and kill Fen Rao. Yeah. For for the cost of one shield, you actually kill him before he activates. Maybe. I wonder what they're discussing right now. Whether it bumps. Trying to work out whether. I think so. Oh, whether uh, maybe they're whether he's an arc. Uh, well, interesting. It's a bit early to worry about arc or not. It's yeah. Worry about actions. Maybe he's asking how the titles work. Ooh, this is this is yeah. If I were Paul, I think I'd just sit there. I would focus. Focus. He's already got a target lock on Fen. Yeah. And just let the bomb go off. Take a shield off. You fire range one at Fen. If he doesn't die, you're PS11. Fire and kill him anyways. Yeah. You're going to get take a shot from Jostro, but... One, whatever. One shield to kill Fen around, get him out of the game? Exactly. I think I take that option. Well, he's going to lose all of his shields this round. I think... You think? I think Quick Dark's going to lose all of his shields this round. Well, Jostro has the lock and the focus. Ooh, so he's going to eat... You set up a rack He's, he's eating round. a heart... So, so Quick Dark's eating a harpoon no matter what. The barrel roll's not going to get him out of range three, or it might... Might just get him out of range three of Jostro. Oh, what a lovely setup. Right? You're right. So, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, right? I just realized what Devin was talking about. So you're right. I didn't even realize. I forgot to put two and two together here. So this, maybe he's willing to drop. But I don't know. This is, it's, it's tough. If it's Quick tough Draw is dead, right? Quick Draw and Fen, if they're gone, I mean, that's not a bad exchange. I don't think he drops Quick Draw this turn, though. I think he just takes away Quick Draw's ability. Either way. If Quick Draw eats a damage from a bomb, that's one, and a harpoon, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Target most... lock, target lock, focus, guidance ships guaranteed to do damage. If uh, if Pete, uh, we've got someone pointing out in chat that that uh, Pete may not have taken a an action. Uh, if he did, then it was a missed opportunity, and and he's gonna have to live with that. Yeah, you'd be correct. It doesn't look like he. Uh, took one unless he took a long range scanner uh, target lock, which we can't see. Uh, maybe he forgot that that bomb was an <laughs> was a not a, was a reveal bomb, not an action bomb. But as Devin just pointed out, at this point it would be uh, it's not opportunity. A, it's not a mandatory thing. <laughs> so and the Gumby's on there. But we we still haven't worried about action yet, so I'm not actually sure what it is they're worried about. Because uh, Quick Draw has yet to take an action. Are you trying to decide? Fair enough, fair enough. Oh. Which is not something you're allowed to call judge call for. You have to suit, you have to... You have to... Think. He has to just decide that before. Okay. Ah, because if he doesn't have arc, he could sacrifice his quick draw for no result, no return. That is a very spicy... But if he decision. barrel rolls, he doesn't have a shot on Fen. But if he doesn't have a shot on Fen... Like, I... I know I'm not sure a barrel roll is the right idea because you can't get out of arc. You can't I, get a Fen's... You can't get out of Fen's range one. And I don't think you can get out of Jostro. But you can get out of the bomb's range. So actually, if he barrel, here's the thing: if he had barrel rolled there, it, Jostro's ability wouldn't have triggered, but Jostro would still would have been able to fire the harpoon missile, and Fen would have been fired. So it's it's bad. This is actually a really good call by Pete. Right. It took me a while to realize and appreciate how interesting that call was, and uh, I'm yep, really yep. Just took a focus. So <sighs> Jesus, that poor rock, knocking everything. It's orbital debris. It happens. It, it's that's what happens normally. So they're they're doing the bomb now. So at the beginning of the combat phase, Quick Draw yeah. took a focus, yeah. which means that I think Paul thinks he's got arc. Yeah. So it looks like he has arc. Yeah, yeah. That looks like it's close. They should hold down the ships yeah, and okay. We should check it properly. Yell judge. Yes. So when now Pete's a teacher, so he's probably explaining things in a way that makes sense for his side of the table. <laughs> Paul, don't fall for it. He's too smart. So when Quick Draw loses a shield, they both shoot. And so that should be determined on an initiative order, which is Peter's, so it is his turn to do. Yeah. That is correct. That's a good call. That's probably what he's explaining to him right now. So the first thing we have to decide is, is if that bomb hits Jostro or not. There we got Vassal Swag on Paul's side. I think we finally got a judge over here to make decisions. Oh, thank God. Graham. That's not good. Oh, there he is. Immediately ask them to play it to hold each things down. That looks like it's going to hit Jostro. Oh, that's close. 
Or do the nubs only count for measuring, correct? They don't count for range? Yeah. So the Jostro nubs the nubs on then. Jostro doesn't count, I believe. So the that nubs means Jostro on the... safe. Okay. So yeah, Jostro appears to be safe. We can we'll we'll have Victor double check that at some point. Yeah. After after this round of combat, we'll just get you to f figure everything out. So this uh, right. So what's going to happen? Quick draw is going to lose a shield. So like that seismic charge will have That's going to trigger Jostro's ability. And quick draws ability at the exact same time, but multiply, but uh, overlapping abilities resolve in uh, initiative favor. Right. So Jostro's ability will resolve first. Which, in case you're unclear of what that is, is when a when when a, when somebody when a when a, when a ship receives damage outside of combat, Jostro is allowed to attack. Yes. Uh, the nubs don't count when measuring for damage. Uh, so or the bomb nubs the nubs like count from the bomb. So on yes. the so yes. the. Nubs on the bomb token count. Yes. But the nubs on Jostro don't count. Correct. For hitting right. the bomb damage. Right. But they do count for overlapping, which is important yes. to know, yes. point out. Yeah. Oh. So that's the harpoon missile from Jostro. I would assume. We have four dice. He's going to focus and then chips for crit and hold the target lock for his actual attack. He's maximizing all of his stuff. Gross. Yeah. Spent the focus. Yeah. Well, he's getting back what he deserved from that last round. Ooh. Oh. That that's is not what you want to see right there. So that's two shields and spend the focus to mitigate damage or just take all three shields? He lost. He took all of his shields off. So he's he's really counting on killing Fen then for this. No, because he, he took damage. And he's harpooned. Yeah. So quick draw is down to one hull. Nope, rest control. He should be two. He's, he took two damage there because he took, yeah. Uh, yeah. He took two hits, three hits in a crit. No. Three right, he lost. Four hits, three hits in a crit. Yeah. Yeah. So he's on one hull. He was down one shield that round before going into that round? Yeah, because oh, of the seismic, seismic charge. Oh, yes, correct. Wow, what a great turn for Pete. And all, just keep in mind, we haven't just even entered. five damage. We haven't even entered combat phase yet. Yeah. We're still actually pre-combat phase. This is all just the stuff that resolves before this is, combat. This is, this is the beginning of the combat phase. Yeah, we have not started combat. Range. Yeah. So now he's he has to kill he's gotta Su get, Tier Fen. He's got to get... He's, <laughs> he's got to kill Su Tier Fen. Let's be fair. That's exactly what he is. He's got to get Fen off the table for this. Otherwise, he would have lost his quick draw for nothing. I'm glad we've got Graham in there doing the... The judgy thing. Yeah. Man, I got a... Hats off oh, to Pete. Oh, man. Hats off to Pete. That was a hell of a round, he said. That's... That's... That's when when he I was talking to him behind before the game. That's the setup he wanted. That's how he wanted it to go down. So he was able to get that done. That was a yeah. really cool turn. And honestly, people are gonna probably maybe hate on me for saying this, but Fen is an amazing piece. But at 32 points, like I know this is bad, but like if he sacrifices him to take down Quick Draw, he still has. He, I mean, yeah, Sooner Fell he's gonna have a hard time killing, but Nim and Jostro can probably take down that Sooner Fell. So I can take down that defender. This is an interesting play now, for him. Now, Quick Draw is also harpooned. Yes. So when he shoots Quick Draw again to kill it... He's going to kill himself. It, no matter what damage he takes right now... Okay, so Fed yeah. is dead no matter and what. And some, someone else just realized that at the exact same time as I did. Yeah, I was posting in chat. I mean, this is going to be really fun. Yeah, Fen is dead yeah, this Yeah, correct. Round. Yes, you're, you're right. It's a moot point. Fen is 100% dead. He's going to go down in a blaze of glory. Wait, was that out of arc? Is that why... Is that why... It, it must be. Oh, my God. Quick draw's out of arc, so we're moving on to Nim. So Quick draw has nothing in arc, so he's just totally so done. So just dead, but he's going to take Fen with oh, him when he blows up. Paul just let Peter uh, take his action out of, uh, out of order. I mean, he's flying casual. That's his call and his right as the opponent player to do, but it should be known. Uh, and, you don't oh, have to do that. Oh, I mean, that's the one, one hit from, from Nim. He would have had an extra one from frames. Oh, he wouldn't have. Never mind. Surrounding sound? I'm not sorry. There was a comment in the, the YouTube chat that I don't quite understand. Metal bag? Surrounding sound? Maybe we're talking over each other. Oh, uh, are we? So here's Fen killing Quick Draw. Two hits and a crit. He could live. But if he dies, he kills Fen Rao. So then you just sacrifice your quick draw to kill your fen? Nope, he's keeping nope, him alive. Nope, nope. Better to have it on board. 
At least maybe he'll get a shot next turn, does a one forward, two forward, something like that. I'm not, shoot sure about fan. that. I'm not sure about that call. I think I actually just let Jostro. Well, no, Jostro still has to fire, though. Jostro still gets to, to fire. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks. <laughs> Someone's should, watching VTTV Live and the Chicago Regionals you, all at the same time. You shouldn't need to multi. This is the only stream you <laughs> need, my friend. It's all good. Look, they've got trajectory simulator wrong. They're making bad calls. Exactly. Oh, oh, there's right. their Pete's dice have come back. Yeah. Two hits and a crit. On uh, there, th quick draw goes down. So does Fen. Now harpooned. Yep, Paul remembered harpooned. Yep, there goes this Fen. This was an amazing turn. There goes quick draw. Wow. Boom, boom, boom. FYI, we're still only at PS... Oh, now we're at PS4, but still. That's hilarious. Well, the Delta doesn't have a shot. No, I'm just saying is that all of that happened before PS9 even occurred. It was it was just... It's pretty incredible and silly at the same time what combinations you can do if you can just get all of everything to fall into place. Quick draw ate five damage at the beginning of the combat phase. Hats off. I don't think I've seen a, a, a one-rounded quick draw in a while. That was that's, interesting. It's a beauty. But, and, and, was but great. That's, but that's Pete's list. It's meant to do that. I think he felt... There's so much. Yeah, maybe. I mean, hindsight and what uh, we don't know. But. The, that comment was about uh, someone in chat said he should have barrel rolled. That it wouldn't have. He might still have eaten the range one fen shot, but he wouldn't have gotten the jostro har and a jostro harpoon. He would have taken one less shot. He wouldn't have had the the seismic damage. You don't think jostro would have had the harpoon range on him? Oh, I think I think uh, I think he would have had the harpoon. I think Absolutely. he's dead either I, way. Yeah, I think it's the exact same result. No matter Staying what he does. and hoping that you would arc. I feel like I looked. I thought he had arc. To be honest with you, I probably would have stayed. Yeah, and someone's saying there's two simultaneous regionals in chat. There's actually Where's Krakow? three. Krakow's in Poland. Oh wow, that's amazing. So there's a Polish regionals, a Chicago regionals, and the Toronto regionals all on uh, January sixth. So, how how cold is uh, Krakow, chat? What's what's the temperature there? Now we're going to the next turn. I mean, the defender K turns. K turns. Fenrau has got to be more aggressive now. Yes. He has to be more aggressive. Yes. He doesn't have a you choice. You mean Sunterfell. Oh, sorry, yeah, Sunterfell. Uh, or well, here's the thing. Suntir Rao is going to come in, and, and he has to be really, really aggressive. Well, this is the thing, because um, uh, Pete still has his, um, his uh, what's it left? His thermals left. So he can't be too aggressive with, with Fell, because uh, if Fell hard twos and boosts in, and look at that. I said he's got a 4K. He's got to be more aggressive. Yeah. He's got to start putting damage on Jostro. I mean, to be fair, it's a defender. There's, there's, you hard three or you 4K. There's not many options you do. I mean, you're not wrong, Samit. You're not wrong. <laughs> That's, uh... <laughs> well, we're trying. We're trying. Look, Alan Fung. So someone in chat saying we got glad they got Sunter on. I'm glad we got Sunter on. I'm glad Paul's, we got Sunter on. Paul's a great player. Uh, and, uh... We had to get Suntir on. We've got, uh, in chat, we've got Winni some guys from Winnipeg uh, talking about Suntir Fell. And Alan Fung promised that he'd bring uh, Suntir Fell to the Sea to Sky podcast out of Vancouver. And, uh, well, we got Suntir. Alan didn't bring Suntir Fell, but we got Suntir Fell on stream. So. Yeah. So we got two comments. Up above, somebody was commenting on how there was a advantage. They give the advantage to Pete in this situation. I do tend to agree. And then I want to comment on somebody else talked about they don't see the appeal to the quick draw. It's a squishy 36-point ship. I also tend to agree, and I'm not really in love with quick draw either. I think what we're forgetting is that it's a PS11 ship that you can give a missile to that can fire twice in a round and could kind of merc your your best ace yeah. for very little cost or not, I won't say skill, but setup. Quick draw's an alpha and he couldn't alpha. And quick draw doesn't require too much setup, especially with advanced optics. If you give him advanced optics and a harpoon missile, yeah, he's 40 points, but something is going to get hit, guaranteed. And I think that's the big appeal of it. And again, if you've ever seen somebody else who flies... Uh, ships a certain way, like I mean, I've, I've flown against Duncan's. Um, Suntir uh, Fell? No, Quick Draw. Okay. And he flies it like he flies everything else, and it's like I didn't understand a ship could do that. So right. it all depends on how it's flown. So I mean, like I guess it's any ship in the game. This is going to be really interesting. Uh, we're we're seeing Paul try and engage now, right? Mm -hmm. Pete disengaging now that he's got the points advantage. Yes. So no shots, no shots. Everyone's going to go right back into planning. Yeah. Uh, and someone in chat is telling me it's forty-six degrees Fahrenheit. But that's a fake number. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what 46 degrees that's, that's, is. That's absurd. That still sounds like it's in the positive. For I mean, like, that's great. The 46, they're that's boiling. So warm. Is that a desert in Poland? Like, what sort of temperature are they using? 
The Death of Revive, that's a good point too. That's a great late game ship. If you can have all the shields going into the one on one, that's brutal, especially with the FCS. I agree. So too. he was saying Quick Draw's not an alpha ship, it's an end game ship. Yeah, which is and a good call. You know, that's what, when you see someone like a local player like Alan Fung fly Quick Draw, yeah. he'll use it as a, a cruise ace. Yeah. So you'll, he'll come in, he'll set up an engagement with Quick Draw, he'll cruise something off the board with one or two of his aces, and then bail them, right? And once that happens, he can get Quick Draw out of there, get like get away with one shield, hopefully, get into the end game, and then Quick Draw in the end game with one or two double taps is just going to be great. Personally, I actually adore Alan's list. So he uses a bit of both. He's got Quiz and he's got... I don't think he's running that today, but... I don't know what he's running today, yeah. but well, he's holding it uh, oh. close to his... Uh, oh, 5-ish C. That's so yeah. warm. Yeah, it's great. That's we're, shorts weather. We're minus 33 here. Real numbers, real numbers. Mm. But, uh, I mean, Sunter Fell doesn't have Twin Ion Engine, so he's no. really limited in what he can do here. Maybe a four forward or a two hard, but yeah. he, he wants to stay at range three of Nim, push a damage or two through a round. And that's the problem. I think you know? I think Pete is going to want to draw Sunter Fell into his rear arc because he's going to want to bomb him. So I think he's happy. He's perfectly happy to lead Sunafel and kite him and wait for him to come into bomb range. Right. Because if he ever gets in front of him, he'll trajectory it. And with genius, he's always going to be able to wait. Uh, chat, we've got 88 players today. And this is actually interesting. He can leave a bomb here. He's, he's baiting out a bomb because Pete doesn't have extra munitions. So seismic charges are gone. Right? Yeah. He's only got thermals left. But if I'm, if I'm Pete, there's no way I waste a, a thermal detonator on a defender that's full health. No, not absolutely not. Not a next seven defender with full health. There's no point. To do one shield to it? And, it's got, and, and that defender, it's twin ion engine. He's got, a, he's got nine greens in front of exactly. him. Exactly. Which he's going to do a three bank next turn anyway, so... I wouldn't, personally, but I'm not Pete. So we'll there's, the, there's the hard two from Suntir Fell. And that's an interesting choice, but he... I think he's going to barrel roll ship right and try to get in front of Nim. I don't think he wants to No, ship left, the rear. ship left. You he's going to come down board. Yeah. Like, going, he can't go over the rock. He has to move. Right? Yes, he absolutely. can't boost. And I think because of the way that the Havoc's dial is, he's going to try and get in behind it, and that'll set him up for next turn maybe being able to get both of his ships onto Jostro. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Inquisitor and Ves VI Vesir is literally my two favorite ships in the game. I completely agree with you. Uh, we don't know how many of the peggers we have in town. We'll see if we can find I, that I, out. I think the answer is zero. That's a shame. But Mark's in chat. He can tell us. Okay. Uh, Eight C that keeps getting warmer there. What's going on here? Well, when you put a bunch of guys together, it gets really hot in That's the room. That's it. I'm moving to Poland. Yeah. Yeah, he, there you go. He went ship left. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, right? Well, no, you didn't go ship right. You went ship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ship left, but right. That's really interesting. Oh, Talon roll trajectory simulator. Maybe. We'll have to see what Pete did. I think the trajectory simulator would be too far. He's going to be very tight. Did he? He would have to have Talon rolled left. He did. He did Talon roll. Oh, he did. He did it. Oh, that might that might hit. No, he's moving forward. He doesn't think it hits. Solid call from Pete. Look at that. Jostro's a little out of position though. He's not gonna be able to get the double shots if he if he does the seismic. You know what? If he moves all the way back, you're right. You could make a case for the genius bomb forward. We're getting questions about rulings in chat. No, we uh we didn't rule like Chicago. We know how the rules work. Nah, that's controversial. Uh, this is really... I didn't expect the Talon roll there. I expected you know him what? to... I didn't either, and that's why it was a good move. Cause because if, if Paul it. had gone around and come in on the side, he'd be really screwed right now. Oh, he is trajectory simulating. Oh, all right. Well, I mean, a damage on Suntir is a damage on Suntir. But if you miss with it, that's your last bomb, which he doesn't miss with it. He does not miss He's, with it. That, that is not going to be a miss. Absolutely. He, my hat is off to you for the rest of this game. That was that is that wow. Now, Pete, I don't know if we've talked about this. Is the two-time Star Trek Attack Wing World Champion, and last he year he was the runner-up. Oh, no, I last year he was. On, no, last year he got to the final table. But yeah, but he doesn't even play it so anymore. He just goes uh, and wins. Yeah, he just goes and wins. Yeah, but this is going to be rough. Suntir Fowl is going to take a double stress. He's going to have another focus. Oh my God. He's going to. Did they forget? Oh no, they haven't the bomb yet so oh there's the second stress and the second focus and theoretically Jostro would have been able to fire here but of course no arc I, I mean it's fine 
I mean... Yeah, the hats off to VTTV. They always do an amazing job with coverage. Yeah, have a round of applause for uh, Travis, who's sitting next to us, making sure everything runs smoothly and uh, keeping up with everything. Oh, you're doing a great job, Travis. Do or do no. not, there is no try. Oh, absolutely. Oh, ooh, nothing from Pete again. He's His dice are real swingy. To be, yeah, oof. Spends the time. Oh, just that's... as you say that, and then... Well, that's that's why you take modded shots, ladies and gentlemen. No, Suntir does Suntir things. Yeah. Spends the focus, takes a crit. What's the crit? Can we see? No, they're just gonna put it right we'll down. We'll get it in a second. So, actually, we can walk back for a quick, uh, a, a quick interaction, which would be interesting. You don't see it that often because we don't see Soonerfell that often. When Soonerfell got hit with that, um, so that um, thermal detonator, he received a stress, and his yeah. pilot ability is whenever you receive a stress, get a focus token. So he actually had two focus tokens this turn. So that's just interesting because we haven't seen him in a while. Uh, because, yeah. funnily enough, blinded because pilot, oh blinded pilot, no goodness. shot. Oh, that's two blinded pilots we've seen this game. This, one on each player. This has been a game of uh, very. This sad is crits. real back and forth. What? Suntir's only taken one damage. That's not the end of the world. The defender's going to be able to brawl next turn. I think. Also, it's going to be really interesting. Pete's out of bombs. Yeah. Uh, which means Jostro's ability no longer matters. No more tricks, but Jostro's going to be able to get. Jostro doesn't something. have the missiles anymore, though. It's just it's just it's just raw dice and raw dice now, and let's he still has an X seven defender, and he still has Sooner fellow targeting computer. This is still very much a game. So someone in chat's asking where in Toronto we are. We're up at Seneca College. We're at uh, North four, York. If you're curious, from the area, uh, the four hundred four and Finch. Yeah. Is There's, anybody flying Rebel Fenrel? Yes, there are a few Reb Fenrels around here. Yeah. Uh, most of them are coming in at PS11. One of them I know has got a hot cop on it, a uh, hotshot co-pilot. I'm not sure what the other build has. I'm sure there's more than two out there, though. Mm. And is there a stress bug? Yeah. Oh. Which is I've played against. It's pretty brutal. That's a great Dirty ship. ship. Yeah. So maybe we'll get some some uh, some of them on later. You're right, 100%. Uh, Auto Blaster is a huge key, especially because Soon so is where do you think, where do you think, think Sunterfell's going right now? Is he, I mean, that's the most important decision here. Like, the defender's going to go ruck up a little bit forward and shoot at Jostro. Like, that's set. But both of the, both Nim and Sunterfell are stressed. Where's Sunterfell going to go? Sunterfell screwed him. I'm going to be honest with you. He doesn't have twin ion, which means his banks, he's only got, he's got the ones and the twos. That's not far enough. He can go four forward, which is actually probably going to get blocked by Nim. And Nim just goes one forward and auto Oh, yeah, so. sorry. Sunter fell's on one health, such uh, uh, chat is reminding us. Travis, Sunter's on one health. I'm sorry. Correct. Good call. Thanks, guys. That's tough. Defender versus the world. So Pete didn't get Fen versus the defender in the end game. No. But he's very happy if all he has to do is hunt down a defender with Nim. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Even Jostro is not a bad option. I mean, it's still three dice versus three dice, but... The Jostro, I, I wouldn't one on be one, as, no, you want, as... You need Nim to win that fight because I think the defender wins that fight. Yeah, again, going back to the auto blaster, right? That's it's pushing game. It's pushing damage to that X7, right? Yeah, if he gets that auto blaster in range one of that defender. This is interesting. Again, this is by no means an unwinnable match for Paul. He's a great player. And, I mean, there's, you know, Nim will take damage. It's just where does he put his Fen that Pete can't cover? I think the, the most obvious is his ship right. Uh, chat's asking how Nim has been able to, to drop the bombs after his maneuver. He's been doing it uh, by discarding each bomb. So seismic charges is gone. Thermal detonator is gone. Correct. Uh, he's got no more bombs Nim left. He, he didn't have extra munitions. Yeah. He's got no more bombs left. Yeah, so he is, so, in fact, out of bombs now. I didn't really expect... Uh, no, he no. only used... Uh, he's he only used, had two bombs. He used the seismic when he was able to kill Quick Draw, and then he just used his thermal detonator now. This is really interesting. I did not expect the three bank from the defender. That's a really good point too, Death. That's a, not a bad idea. Which might so be what he's going well, for. When you when you talk about chat, you got to explain what they're saying. People can't. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. People in the future won't be able to see chat. Oh, so my apologies. If, I but, did not expect that from Sunterfell. I expected him to go out around the rock, disappear. But I guess he's he's protecting him with with the defender. That's a really really interesting move. He pulls off one of the stress, and maybe he blocks. Maybe he. I it's think he's hoping for a block. Well, because the Kyrax does not have a. Oh, the Kyrax has already moved. Sorry. Yeah, the Kyrax has moved. I think. I think. I think Jostro's got a shot. But yeah, Ooh, with that clears. It, it doesn't. It yeah. It, uh, that's a dead Sunter Fell right there. Now he's gonna trade Sunter Fell for maybe four damage on Nim from the defender. 
by it, uh, three, statistically. Pete's just made literally it. every right call. Yeah, chat's saying GG. They're not wrong. They might not be wrong. Let's uh, see. Auto Blaster can whiff, guys. It's not guaranteed. Auto Blaster can whiff. He can, I, I don't know. Uh, I think if Pete's feeling spicy. Wait a second. What's going on here? Did he... Does he have... Okay. We have to confirm if he has extra munitions or not. Because if he doesn't have extra munitions, that's not an option he can do. Yeah, he might not be on the list he gave us. Okay. Oh, he does have extra munitions. Yeah. Oh, chat. Sorry, guys. We were wrong on the... Uh, we missed it off it's, of his it's list. It's on the list, but it's not uh, on what we what so, put in. So Pete does have extra munitions. Ouch. Okay, maybe I take back my GG's comment. Ouch. Yeah, which means Joshua's going to proc as well. So Joshua's... I can't hit the defender, so it doesn't matter. No. Sinnerfell's dead. It's darkest timeline. Yes. Ethan Bryan, the, uh, it's a really fun ship, Kylo's uh, ship. It's... It's it, you're right it, for what it costs you. It's it is a little underwhelming, but it's still fun. It's a very fun ship to fly. And I mean, it's a feeling I haven't had in a long time. Advanced sensors, PTL, Kylo is. This a really is fun, this is. Ship. Yeah, Sunterfell is. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's on this one too. It just didn't get put in on the list. So this is he does have extra missions. Yeah, it's just not in the overlay. Sorry guys. It is it is now. You'll see it. You'll see it appear. Uh, there's a hand death. There's death quite Leviathan. a few. There's a few silencers out. The sil uh, silencer double gunboat, which is a really fun list. That's what I was thinking of bringing. Is, is out. The there. silencer just is constantly token starved. Zero. He's zero not Sunterfell. That's exactly it. You described it properly. It's a great maneuver, greatly maneuverable ship with with nothing. It's got no teeth. So what we're seeing here is an auto blaster doing one damage to a delta, and. Uh, Pete's just got to clean this up. Like, I want to... Mm, if that defender can put... The put, defender should be down two shields at this point there, Travis. hero dice. That's oh, what he that's, needed. that's hero dice. That's what he needed. That's Nim eating a stack of damage. Hopefully, we'll be able to see a bit of a comeback. Oh, that's four hits. That's, that's, that, that's, that's the, beautiful. That's two crits in the hull. I want to see this. Oh, one crit, No, one sorry. crit, one crit. Hit, crit. Something. Fun. Blinded pilot. Oh my gosh, we got both blinded is, pilots. We is got that another blinded? Stunned? Stunned. Oh, stunned pilot. Ah, it's fine. That's not going to be mean, a problem. I mean, maybe we'll see a, a hard three from the defender here. Well, the defender Get a got, little damage he, on the Nim. He's got a hard three to the right because because he has extra munitions. If he 4Ks, he gets bombed. If this, he goes left, he gets bombed. This is what... Paul needed to stay in the yes, game. He really needed large damage. Jostro versus the Delta in the end game. My money is on the Delta. All day, every day. If, if he can if he can come out of this with at least two hull left on his defender, and he look, can get Nim off the table. He eats a thermal, who cares? Right? So long as he's not in Jostro's arc, he if he can trade his last shield for a solid shot on Nim and push through those three damage. But oh. But that's the thing, he can just but uh, I don't think he can because if I'm Peter, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take Nim into that open space uh, ship left. He won't get a shot if he four Ks. So you have to yeah, hard, three, hard three to the right. Hard three, and he I get your evade token. My money, my money's on barrel roll. Hard three barrel roll. Interesting. For to get that block. Well, we'll see where the three bank puts us. We're at a bit of an angle. Um, well, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. Also, guys, in the chat, I think I think the I think we need a few months to really feel. Uh, we need we need we need Kylo to be in the hands of more really great players as time comes out to see where he fits. I, I for one love the ship. I want to put more time into it. Uh, it's not too sooner fell. It's not the Inquisitor. It's not Fen Rao. It's something new. I'm really interested to see what that new is. But you're right. It what is he? Is he a point fortress? Is he is he an evasion machine? Is is he is he just something really fun that you play on a league night? I don't know. We'll see if he's tournament ready today and over the course of the next six rounds. If Kylo Ren had a better pilot ability, just a different one, it would increase his effectiveness by maybe 20 or 30%. I feel like if you gave him a better ability, then then the VI becomes a potential. Because I tried him with VI now, and it's dog shit. Oh, there goes a the bomb. Oh, no. no. Proccing for the hard three, right? The yeah. hard three. I mean, yeah. look at that. Of course you do and, that. And we'll, we'll see if uh, he barrel rolls in for the block, right? Just to... Because he can't genius if he's blocked, right? He can bomb, and if he bombs here, he's out of range one, right? 
It is true, because with extra munitions, Genius really hasn't changed all that much. I mean, you, you pretty much died before you dropped more than four bombs anyways. You just swap them, right? So yeah. you put bomb on something else, and you, you load up eight points of bombs on the NIM, and you, you well, wreck people's faces. You called it barrel roll. Yeah. Going for the block, and then K-turn, and then it's interesting. I like the way Paul's playing. Yeah. Oh, Paul's a very good player. He's playing very tight. The defender's very tanky. Right? All he's got to do is get one good shot on Nim, and he's back in this game. Actually, all you right? All he's he winning need, on points. All he has to do is kill Nim. Exactly. He's got 11 minutes to kill Nim and win the game, and that's still possible, which means we still have a game, which is actually really, really awesome. Jostro coming in to punish him, but Jostro's going to, without without homing missiles... He's going to pepper him. Without Atani, it's going to be very difficult for for Jostro to, to really push damage through onto an X7 defender. I mean, it's still three attack for three attack versus three evade. Oh, he called that. Looks like, and he's gonna be in auto blaster range. He's gonna clear. No. You don't think he clears? No. It's close. It's well, worth they'll, they'll they'll get they'll get uh, the defender out of there. Yeah, they should proc it for sure. Oh. Oh. Now it definitely clears. Pete's Pete's gonna put it back where he thinks it was. That's your opponent fixes your ship. There we go, and. You know, you know what I would do here, Smeet? Nah. I'd genius my final bomb. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't you? You got auto blaster genius. You 100% do that. You drop the bomb. Hit yourself. Who cares? It triggers jo oh, wait, Jostro. Not, no, 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 no. Don't do it. Oh, no. it triggers Jostro. You win the game. You get the MOV. If Pete's going for the win, you're right. That's what he does. It's coming it's right here. Doing. It's okay. coming right here. You know, I gotta say though, it was a shame that Paul moved the ship with his sleeve there. I'm not entirely convinced that it, it, it did. There. It did. It did. Yeah, clear? yeah. Okay. They both got a stress. They both take a damage. So Nim, uh, Nim's down to two hull. Delta's down to just hull, and uh, Jostro is gonna get a shot. Mm. Set that up. So uh, when I said Jostro was gonna have difficulty pushing damage through, not with uh, two tries. No, it's not. Not with two shots. He's not gonna have problems. So, oh, not when, not when Pete rolls like that. Strip the evade token for his return shot. Fing, fingers crossed, right? Ah. Uh, no, that's still damage. Yeah, yeah, it takes, takes one. This is tough. So the uh, delta's down to two hull, and then we get auto blaster. Auto blaster turret. Target lock. So he can't. This might be game right here. Paul can't use his evade. He already spent it on the last attack. Yeah, but he can't. He can't use his evade dice against hits on this attack. Target so, lock for hit, and it's game. Let's see. Let's oh, see. no, he doesn't have target lock with Nim? Or he forgot. No, I don't think he does. He would have had an action, though. What action did he take? He took a focus. It's, you're, it's hiding behind Nim. Oh. Double okay. crits from Jostro. we got to see Paul's dice come through here. Nope. No. That's it. Crit, that's it. That's game. Eight minutes left, and uh, what a game. Yeah, that was an interesting match. I mean, Pete was just putting on a masterclass of like planning. That was some really awesome setups, so that was a very interesting game.